Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep. In this video, we're going to go over domains and ranges of logarithms as well as graphs and transformations of the graphs of logarithms. So if I think about the domain of a logarithm, I have y equals log base b of x. b is my base. Think about what the base needs to be in a logarithm. Remember we said with the basics that my base must be a positive number. It also shouldn't be the number one. So we have a base b that is positive. And if you think of this in exponential form, Remember, we've said b to the y equals x. We really need this base b of our exponential function to also be a positive number as well. So our base is positive, and if we're taking a power of some positive number over here, then of course our answer is also going to need to be a positive number as well. So if we have a positive base to some power, then this thing must be positive as well. The moral of the story is, whatever is inside of my logarithm must also be a positive number. That's going to be an important rule for logarithms for domain. So if you have a logarithm, base b, no matter what the base is, the inside of your logarithm, whatever formula or expression is inside of your logarithm, you need to have x values so that when you plug into that formula, you're taking the log of something that is positive. In other words, whatever's inside my parentheses, inside of my logarithm here, must be positive. And in math, we say positive positive as greater than zero. So let's look at a few examples of finding domain of a logarithm. Here I have y equals log base three of x plus four. So inside of this logarithm must be positive, must be greater than zero is what we're saying. So we set up x plus four is greater than zero. And this is easy to solve for x. My restriction for x, I would subtract four for both sides and I'm going to get that x needs to be greater than negative four. And that's our domain for this logarithm, right? Whatever's inside, greater than zero, and then go ahead and solve that for x. And so as long as you plug in values that are bigger than negative four into this logarithm, you could take this logarithm. If you plug in negative four or something less than negative four, this is gonna be an undefined expression. We're not gonna be able to take log base three of that number. Let's look at another one. We have y equals natural log, so that's log base e, of 3x minus 1. So remember, this thing inside of the logarithm just needs to be positive. In math, we say that's greater than 0 is what positive means. So we'll say that 3x minus 1 needs to be greater than 0. This is a two-step to actually solve for the domain. First thing we'll do is we'll add 1 to both sides. So we'll get that 3x is greater than 1. And if we divide both sides by three then, we will get that our domain is that x needs to be greater than one third. So as long as I plug in anything that is bigger than one third as a number, I would be able to take the natural log of that number. Anything that's one third or less than one third, this would be an undefined operation. We couldn't take the natural log of that. Now let's shift to looking at the graphs. So remember that a log is the inverse operation of an exponential with the same base. So here I've just graphed ahead of time y equals 2 to the x. We have some points and that's the overall shape of the graph. So there's my graph of y equals 2 to the x. Remember that log base 2 of x is the inverse of y equals 2 to the x. So since it's the inverse, and when we solve for an inverse, we swap the x and the y values, so that means whatever points I have on this graph, if I swap the x and the y values, that will be on the log base 2 of x graph. So if you think about swapping the x and y values, that's just going to reflect across the line y equals x. If I take this point, for example, 1 comma 2, and I reflect it across the line, that will be 2 comma 1. The x's and y's will be swapped. If I have 2 comma 4 and reflect that across, this line goes straight across, then that would be the point 4 comma 2. So it's just swapping the x's and y's. So our inverse function, log base 2 of x, looks like this reflection across this diagonal line that goes through the origin y equals x. And remember, that will always be true of graphs of inverse functions. Their graphs will be reflections across this line, y equals x, because they have their x and y values swapped. So let's start working with this function here, y equals log base 2 of x. You might notice right away that log graphs don't have the x-axis as a horizontal asymptote like exponential functions did. 
logarithm graphs have the y-axis as a vertical asymptote in their basic form. So our asymptote is actually the y-axis and now it's a vertical asymptote instead of a horizontal asymptote. And the equation for this y-axis here is x equals zero. So we'll say that the equation for our vertical asymptote is x equals zero for this graph. When thinking about the domain of this log, remember that we're only allowed to plug in positive values into our logarithm, so of course we're going to need things between zero and infinity in here. If you're looking at the graph, you can see this graphically because we're really only getting graph on the right side of the y-axis. And over here, this graph is where all of the positive x values are. So we're getting graph where all of the x values are from zero to infinity. We don't have any log base two of x graph over here on the left side. Now this graph is going down forever and ever and getting closer and closer the further it goes down to the axis, but it never touches the axis. That's what our vertical asymptote is. So it's going down forever. It's also, if you can see, going up and to the right forever off the edge of our page, right off the edge of our graph here that we've drawn. So the y values we get on the graph go down forever and they also go up forever. So we actually get a range of negative infinity to infinity. When you think in terms of inverse functions, remember that an exponential function had a domain of negative infinity to infinity and a range of zero to infinity. And since this is the inverse of an exponential, it should have the domain and range of an exponential swapped. We'll be doing some transformations of graphs also with logarithms here in this video, so we want to just make sure you've seen the systems of thought of IHOD and OVER. Remember that IHOD says when I have a change to my logarithm function that is inside the logarithm, that will be a horizontal change to the function. It will be opposite what we expect based on what we see, and it may possibly affect the domain. For OVER, that will be when we have an operation that is outside of the logarithm. That will be a vertical change to the graph. It will change exactly what we expect to see based on what is written in the formula, and it may affect the range. Let's look at the first of our examples here. We have log base two of x plus two. Now this plus two is outside of the logarithm. Outside means that we have an over transformation. So outside means it's going to affect it vertically exactly what we see. So a vertical change of plus two means that we will shift the entire graph of log base two of x up two units to get the graph of this function. Now, if we look at a few of the points that we have, and we want to just list three points that might be on our new graph to give us sort of some help in sketching the new graph, think about moving some of these points up too. So if I have my intercept here, one zero, if I move that up to, that becomes one comma two. Here I have two comma one, this point, if I move that up to, that would be at two comma three. And if I take my point four comma two and move that up to, that will be at four comma four. The equation of the asymptote, if I slide this entire graph up, if I slide the asymptote directly up vertically, does that change the location of the asymptote? And it doesn't because the asymptote is sliding along itself. It's not going to move side to side at all. So since it's moving directly along itself, that asymptote is going to stay on the y-axis. In other words, our asymptote will stay the equation x equals zero. Since we know that this is an over change, it might affect the range, but it's not going to affect the domain. So we keep the typical domain of a logarithm function, which is from zero to infinity. Now, if we look at our new graph, then we'll get this type of a thing. You can see our domain is zero to infinity. Do I get a different range now? And the answer is I do not. This graph is still going down forever, and it's still going up and to the right forever. So my range is still going to be negative infinity to infinity. Remember, r here in over means it could affect the range of the graph of my new function, but it's not guaranteed to affect the range. Let's look at our next example here. We have y equals log base two of x plus two. Now the plus two is inside of the logarithm. So since the so since the addition is now inside of the log, this is going to be an IHOD transformation. So it's inside, it's going to be a horizontal change and it will be opposite what we think. So horizontal change plus two, opposite of plus two would be minus two. So what is a horizontal change? minus two, what is that? Well, moving horizontally minus two would mean moving to the left, two units. So we're going to take the entire graph of y equals log base two of x, shift it to the left two units to get this graph, y equals log base two 
of x plus 2. Thinking about moving some of these points over left 2, we'll get a few points to help guide us in sketching our graph. If we take my 1, 0 and I move it over 2, then that puts us at negative 1, 0. If I take the 2, 1 point and move it over 2, that will put it on the axis. That'll make it 0, 1. And then my 4, 2, if I move that over two units, that will be at the point two comma two. Now think about what's happening to the asymptote. If we take everything and we shift it to the left two, will the asymptote stay in the same place? And the answer is no, it won't. It will be shifted over left two, it will be a completely different line, and it will be x equals negative two. Since this is an IHOD transformation, we may possibly affect the domain, so we know that the range for logarithms is going to stay the same on this one. The range for logs is negative infinity to infinity. Now let's see what this graph looks like when we shift everything over 2. If we shift everything left 2, we get a graph that looks like this, and here's our new asymptote at x equals negative 2. Now we say, does this affect the domain? And it does. So first of all, if you did this algebraically and you set x plus 2 greater than 0 and subtract 2 from both sides, you would see that x needs to be greater than negative 2. You can also see it graphically here in our picture. So my graph is going to be where everything to the right of negative 2 is on the x-axis. So that tells me that my domain is from negative 2 to positive infinity. If we think about the function y equals negative log base 2 of x, we want to know how this will be transformed. So my negative, you'll notice, is outside of the logarithm, multiplying by negative 1. And so since it's outside, this will be an over transformation. Now, this will be a vertical change. So think about a negative outside being a vertical change. If we multiply by a negative, that's going to be a reflection. And since it's an over transformation, it's going to be a vertical reflection. So here we have reflection vertical. I'm going to take this graph of y equals just plain log base 2 of x and reflect it vertically to get the graph of y equals negative log base 2 of x. If we try to come up with three points on this transformed graph, maybe it's a little confusing to think about where this 1, 0 reflects. It's not actually going to reflect at all because it's on this line of symmetry here if we're reflecting vertically across the x-axis. So let's just pick three other points. Let's pick my 2, 1 point. If I do that one and reflect it vertically, it's going to be down here, so it'll actually be at 2, negative 1. My point 4, 2 here, if I reflect that vertically, that will become 4, negative 2. And if I take another point, I could take this 8, 3. Let's take this one here. This is 1 half, negative 1. I'm over a half and I'm down 1. So if I reflect to this point, let's say, it would become above the axis 1 unit. So that would actually become 1 half, comma, positive 1. If I reflect vertically, does that change where the asymptote is? Well, if I fold my picture across the x-axis, I'm going to get this line transporting itself to exactly where it is on the other side. So that's not going to change our usual asymptote for logarithms. We keep an asymptote of x equals 0. If we go ahead and plot our new graph with the same asymptote and these new points and a reflection vertically, then we get this kind of a picture here for our new graph. Now. What kind of a domain and range does this have? You can still see that the graph is all to the right of the asymptote here, so we'll get a domain that is all the positive numbers. Think about this part of the graph that is approaching the axis, right, approaching the asymptote, is going to keep getting more and more positive as it approaches the axis, so it will go up forever. And this piece of the graph right here, I think we can tell, is going down and to the right forever. So we actually get a range that is all real numbers. So we keep the same domain, 0 to infinity, we keep the same range, negative infinity to infinity, that we usually have. For our final example with graphing transformations, here we have y equals log base 2 of negative x. So now my change, my multiply by negative 1, my reflection, is inside of the logarithm. So this is going to be an IHOD transformation. IHOD means we will have horizontal change, and multiply by negative 1 means reflect. So this will be a horizontal reflection of the function. If we state three points on the transform graph, think about reflecting some of these points horizontally. 
one zero moves across, it becomes negative one zero. Two comma one moves across, it becomes negative two comma one. And four comma two would move directly all the way across and become negative four comma two. If I fold this picture right along the asymptote horizontally, fold it along the axis, then that asymptote is going to be right on the fold line and it's going to stay exactly where it is. So we keep our asymptote of x equals zero. This is an IHOD transformation. It's not going to affect the range, so the range is going to stay a typical log range of negative infinity to infinity. Let's look at this graph of our new y equals log base two of negative x. So we get this reflection and it faces the other direction. So for our domain, we can tell we're no longer getting graph where there are positive values of x. We're approaching the asymptote from the left side now. So we're actually getting graph where there are all negative values of x. So our domain is actually for this one going to be from negative infinity way out here to zero. We go right up to zero at the asymptote, but don't exactly touch zero. Okay, hopefully this gives you ideas for domain, for range, graphs of basic logs and transformations of logarithms. Good luck on your logarithms, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.